Greetings! Today on the channel we discuss 10 drummers who cross over between jazz and non-jazz. You might well be wondering, what's so special about that? If you're a rock drummer, you might be thinking, jazz, what's the big deal? It's splishity splash on the hi-hats. It's not mashuga. It's not snarky puppy either. Likewise, if you're a trained jazz drummer, you're probably thinking, bro, we have to play this. We have to play this. We have to practice this shit. Who in their right mind thinks we couldn't play a little rockety rocket? And my point is, you're both right. Crossover for a rock or funk drummer who's never played jazz is awkward. It may be choppy, but it doesn't sound authentic. In the language of jazz, you have heavy accents. In Russia, accent have you. Likewise, if you're a jazzer who's never played many backbeats, your beat is likely to be Weird. Died in the Wool Groove Cats can hear the weirdness, even if you can. That's why today's drummers are relatively rare. Ten drummers who are equally at home in both jazz and backbeat idioms. Who, to use the language analogy, speak without detectable accents in either language. Stay tuned. Guys, before we kick off with the first example, you may well be wondering, Nate, what can I do to improve my crossover appeal? Well, funny you should mention that because I've got you. Three video mini course, which will help you with time, groove, jazz, and teach you the fundamentals of backbeats. Free. Download it by clicking below the play. Okay, on to our number one. Crossover maestro number one, Justin Brown. Justin Brown, now of Thundercat fame, has been crossing over between jazz, fusion, funk, soul, and electronica since before it was cool. He's played with Jose James, Evan Marion, and Gerald Clayton. So let's check out a little of his catalog. How we know he's legit in non-jazz. Check this out. This is We're All In This Together by Pascal Lebeuf. Big kit, close mic'd, backbeats, can't fake this. Now let's check him out with Jose James. Girl, you are my everything and I try to show you how I be you. And with Thundercat. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Finally, here he is with Evan Mary. So, JB, definitely big kit bona fides. Yet he's equally at home playing the jazz. As one of my favorite recordings illustrates. And here's that clip from the top, which is actually from an Ambrose Akin Musuri gig. Justin Brown, truly a crossover master. And you're equally likely to be familiar with our next multilinguist in the language of drums. Crossover maestro number two, Mark Juliana. Mark popped onto a lot of jazz people's radar with Avi Shai Cohen, and a lot of non-jazz people's radar with beat music. How do we know he's legit in non-jazz? Here's Mark playing with beat music, one of my favorite, favorite clips. Luncheon, luncheon, luncheon. Here he is playing with Tim LaFave in an amplified backbeat context. And several of Mark's projects are in between. Take for instance, now versus now. And Avishai Cohen.
By the way, shout out to Sam Barsh, Strong Shy Town Roots. But how do we know Marcus the did it jazz? Just to make sure everybody had it straight, Mark returned to his roots and recorded a completely acoustic jazz album. And if you're a fan of any kind of modern soul music, or if you haven't been living under a rock, you're likely to be familiar with our next crossover artist. After all, he's a man who replaced Juliana in the Now vs. Now drum chair. Crossover maestro number three, Justin Tyson. If you know the Robert Glasper experiment, you've doubtless heard of Justin. But for drum nerds, it was this church video that put him on the radar. Anyway, how do we know he's legit at non-jazz? Well, I think I just showed it, but also this clip. Like Mark, there's Now versus Now, which is kind of in the middle. But how do we know he's legit at jazz? God bless Smalls. Shoutouts, Spike Wilner former classmate. Anyway, there are Smalls videos of a lot of these crossover folks who are better known for non-jazz than for jazz. And here's Justin Tyson playing straight ahead. Plus, there's this barn burner with Esperanza Spalding. Convinced, our next artist is someone you're less likely to have heard of, but he's one of my favorite crossover artists and somebody else I met at music school. Crossover Maestro number four, Kenny Grahowski. I first met Kenny in Bobby Sanabria's Latin big band in music school when a classmate, who will appear later in this list, told me Kenny sounds more like Vinny than Vinny. He wasn't wrong, but of course Kenny had his own individual style. Watching Kenny from a few feet away was definitely one of the more inspiring experiences in music school. And Kenny's held down the drum chair in Steve Coleman's spin-off group DAP Theory for a number of years. That's among the reasons we know he's legit at jazz. Besides taking my damn word for it, I was there, bro! But here's another clip, and it might be a takes a jazz native to know a jazz native kind of thing. But just trust me, the touch, the feel, the orchestration, it's all there. He's legit at jazz. Definitely speaks jazz without an accent. Okay, but how do we know he's legit at non-jazz? Funny you should ask. Yeah, that. Speaking of jazz metal drummers, honorable mention, Jared Lippy. Another killing jazz drummer who doesn't get enough credit, who also plays and slays at metal. And while we're on the subject, Arthur Natick, okay? Before you guys rust me in the comments, I know Arthur's a great crossover artist. And while we're at it, Ron Bruner and Mike Mitchell, okay? Obviously. And Mason. And Spaven. Anyway, our next guy is an artist who's one of the most underrated in both categories. Crossover maestro number five, Jemire Williams. Jemire was huge in the mid-aughts, and a lot of jazzers probably first heard of him when he was playing with Gretchen Parlotta. But he was also killing in the Dr. Lonnie Smith trio. So that's how we know he was legit at jazz, but he was equally comfortable playing funk and soul. As was our next artist, crossover maestro number six, Obed Calvert. You may know Obed from the SF Jazz Collective. 
but I had years of hearing him live, with big bands and small groups alike. Here are some clips if I was able to find them. And Obed's another one who, just trust me bro, was legit at the non-jazz stuff too. Equally at home playing the big kit and slamming the back. And you've seen Corey Fonville with Butcher Brown. Or at the Zildjian Underground. Sorry, graphic. What you may not know is he also played with Christian Scott. And he's legit as they come at Crossover. Bit of a pause, and let's get some Dilla. You might be wondering, Nate, how do you know all these Crossover artists? Well, I'm totally leveraging my 2000 aughts live music experience here. Living in New York, you have a lot of opportunities to see people who are known for one thing, play gigs in a different genre. Usually it's some kind of underground live gig. Then of course, when you go looking for a jazz clip of somebody who's known for fusion or vice versa on YouTube, you'll probably find it. But a lot of people don't think to look. Case in point, our next player, who's famous for his fusion videos and his viral shed videos, but I actually knew long before I did a YouTube search that he was the most legit jazz drum. How did I know this? I saw him on a live gig in like 2010 with my friend Brian and my friend Terriver, who, by the way, all you all who are always asking in the comments who wrote the theme for this channel? It was Terriver. So there's some trivia. Anyway, onto this mysterious masked man with fusion bona fides who's secretly a super legit jazz drummer. I'm speaking, of course, of one Mr. Dana Hawkins. He broke the drum internet with those Evan Marion videos. then turned up at random sheds all over the internet, just raining shops. But it will probably surprise you to learn, Dana is as legit as they come at Straight Ahead Jazz. As the Smalls archive once again proves. And the next drummer is sort of in the same boat, although he's more famous for fusion. Crossover maestro number nine, Nate Wood. Of course, everybody knows Nate for knee body, where he has plenty of opportunity to demonstrate deep rock roots and funk and even metal. Fewer may know him for his role with Tigran Hamasian before Arthur Nadek replaced him in that drum chair. And fewer still probably know that he's been Keith Carlock's primary replacement with Wayne Kranz. But fans of Ben Wendell's self-led groups will also know Nate as a legit jazz drummer. Probably my favorite context to hear Nate is with the ACT trio, with Nate, Ben, and bass player Harish Raghavan. Anybody think they know who number 10 is going to be? Come on, who's a huge name we've left out of this? Give you a hint, when I learned he was playing with Dave Holland, I despaired because I'd never heard of two drummers of the same name playing with the same artist. And by the time I started the 8020 channel, I already had the word other in front of my name whenever people in the jazz scene would refer to me. Give up. Crossover maestro number 10, Nate Smith. Where to begin? Fearless Flyers? 
Is this an underground? His own group. Chris Potter's underground, perhaps. So Nate's funk and fusion bona fides are as solid as they come. But what about his straight ahead jazz playing, Nate? Small's archive to the rescue again. Not only is Nate legit at jazz, he's also world-class at jazz. So that rounds out the top 10. You guys, I guarantee there'll be some dissenters in the comments. There'll be some folks I didn't think of. There'll be some people who say, why didn't you think of this person or that person? Couple caveats. Number one, these are just 10 people who came to mind. It doesn't mean that if I excluded somebody, they're not also an excellent crossover artist. Number two, I'm explicitly aiming at modern drummers with this. So obviously there are tons of drummers in the past. Ginger Baker, Steve Gadd, et cetera, et cetera. Not taking anything away from those guys, I'll probably make another video at some point with historic crossover artists. Anyway though, if you have an opinion on how I did, you wanna leave a polite comment, you can feel free to do that. Also, if you made it through the video, you're wondering how do you become a better crossover artist? It's all about learning the fundamentals. And there are three things that make great drummers of any genre better than the rest of us. Their time, the ability to play clean, and the ability to keep your head in front of your hands. If you hear those and you think, wow, that's right. But also, not a lot of people have been talking about them. Perhaps you might be a good fit for my free three video course. Get it, click below the player, enter your email in. You know the drill, get those three videos. Make you better in three weeks than you've gotten in the previous six months. Dudes, it's been real. Always have fun with these. See you again in another lesson of the week. <laughs> Windows speaking day two reshoot audio. Hopefully I'm wearing the same shirt. I didn't shave. Maybe people will be able to tell. And then we can say that they're conspiracy theorists. So what else happened? Was the moon landing faked? Is the world flat? Back to drums.